ready for this uh, workshop and then uh, people asked me what is your topic and I said lesson plan. I said, uh, okay, lesson plan, but lesson plan is lesson plan. What are you going to say? Because uh, you are not that much familiar, but those who are teacher, lesson plan is paper, you write your lesson. That has not something uh, very important or I don't say. But uh, I'm not an expert, but I'm pretty sure what you are supposed to do is to take small bits of break into the long duration of lesson plan. But, however, what we are going to do after this workshop is to take small bits of lesson planning in between long hours of uh, breaks. So let's look at names. To explain actual definition of lesson planning and its development, what is a lesson plan? Do you know what is lesson plan? Are you familiar with lesson planning? New teachers. So, to clarify the sequence of lesson planning, sequences mean stages. Whenever we are going to write a lesson plan, how we should write it. And the last one, to suggest some profitable tips in order to facilitate lesson plan writing. As you go furthermore, you realize that lesson planning is not easy. Because it takes a lot of time, you have to think. And here, I am here to tell you some uh, tips to make your lesson planning shorter and faster. And question, may you read that for me? Of the course of instruction. For example, you are going to teach something, 
you have to plan for that. If you don't have any plan for that, I'm sorry, you will miss failure. And uh, it's so very important. Without planning, uh, you can do something in your past. And it includes the goal, how the goal will be reached, and a way of measuring how well the goal was reached. You have a goal teaching grammar. How, you, how will you teach the grammar? And at the end of the class, after you taught them the grammar, you have to uh, measure them. Do they understand or, just, or they just say, OK, we get it. And next session, they don't remember anything. This is a lesson. The next part is lesson plans development. How a lesson plan develops. Do you have any idea? Development of a lesson plan. A lesson plan includes what? Besides the goal, how the goal will be reached and the measuring of the way and measuring the way. Anyone? What you are going to teach, you can't plan your lesson plan. So the title may be Seasons, Clothing, Restaurants, CD, uh, CD Centers, or something like this. So you have to write the title on the top of your paper, what you are going to teach. And the next part is time. It divides into two parts. The time of your class, you say, OK, my class uh, is between uh, 3.30 up to 5. No. The duration, I mean. The time that you spend for teaching the grammar. 20 minutes, 15 minutes, or one hour. This is very important, because whenever you can't uh, write a duration of time, you can't realize that, you will fail. The next part is materials. OK, you have talked about the title, about time, but you don't have any materials. You don't have any board, any markers to write on, or you don't have any students in class. Students maybe some materials, too. And the next part is <laughs> materials, the things that you are going to teach with them by using of them. For example, marker, board, storybook, their course book, uh, maybe a video. If you don't have them, you cannot teach them. You said that at the first step is time. Okay, for, for instance, I, I'm to teach a uh, gram, grammatical plan. I want to teach a kind of grammatical lesson plan. Time title such as uh, conditional sentences. Okay. Uh, and the time is the duration of the duration. And uh, you said that matter, such as matter. Uh, how can, uh, my question is that how can we combine the same? When we want to write a kind of lesson plan, how can we write the same? It has a section. It has uh, materials. You write it's your a, materials. It's a kind of work. It's a kind of writing work. It's not writing. Here's a lesson plan. I will show you the lesson plan thing. Okay? It has different parts. Title, time, duration, your class profile. And there is a section. It includes materials. You should write the materials in there. And whenever you go to the class, so you have your materials. Can it be used by some tasks, some extra tasks, for example, as you mentioned, you want to uh, teach grammar. Can we use, for example, copies of pages of extra books, you know, grammar packs, grammar posters, and this is, can be one kind of material too. Extra paper, extra tasks, you can copy and bring it in the What am I saying to you is that material is as important as the content. Okay? If you don't have material, so you are just, um, you're not even a teacher. The next part is objective, your goal, your aim, what you want your students to be, to know, uh, they can do after your teaching. This is objective. And the next one is set. Does anybody and does anyone have any idea about the set? What do I mean by the set? After objective is set. Do I mean that? Stages, no. Controlling them, 
you know, the decoration or how you perform, how you want to perform. Uh, and and uh, you mean, the, the I, think that, uh, I think that this depends on the way of writing mm -hmm. the lesson plan. Yes. No. It is in the fifth section, so it's very important. It doesn't relate to decoration of the class. It is about how to start the class. You have brought a very good lesson plan, but you can't start it. You can't motivate students in it, and uh, you are uh, familiar with that. If you cannot uh, engage students at the first minute, they will be bored. They will be tired. They won't listen to you and pay attention to you. So. Take, uh, take the set into consideration, it's very important. The next part is an instructional component. You teach. It uh, includes your teaching. How will you teach? Procedure. And the next part, it is very important, and I love that, is independent practice. Imagine you taught them very well, you have talked about title, the set, materials were ready, all of them, and you're going to home. Is that normal? Yeah? Here's the point. Independent practice. It doesn't matter. You teach them very good or very bad. Actually, it matters, but it doesn't matter that much important. But if you don't give them some practice, they will forget it. Even if you taught them very well, but they will forget it for the next session. So make sure that you have planned some independent practice too. The next part is summary. After the practice, you can tell them a summary of the lesson again. It can be you explaining that, or it can be your gifted student explaining that. And the last part is an evaluation component. The stage that you evaluate the class, your students, and even yourself. Did I teach well? Did my students understand? And uh, the way of teaching I had, was that okay or not? So, these are developments. Why do we need a lesson plan? I told you what is a lesson plan, I told you it's development, but maybe some of you have this question in your mind. Why do we need a lesson plan? Why is it necessary? Do you have the same question? Because I had this. Why do I need a lesson plan? No one? You all like lesson plan writing? Why do we need participation, even the new ones? Come on. Why do we need lesson plan? You've seen lots of observers in your class. They come, they sit, they observe, and uh, the lesson plans. What is why, why do you think they're doing it? I am uh, 
agree. I agree that they are stupid, but they are very important. Yeah, they're very important, of, all, of utmost importance. Who am I teaching? What am I teaching? How will I teach? And how, how would I, I know? Students? How will I know my student? Get the message across. You should know your students. How many students do you have? What is their gender? How old are they? Even their personality, their styles. That students have styles of learning. For example, visual, auditory, kinesthetic. So you have to know them. And what am I teaching? It's made looks very simple. Okay, grammar. Okay, listening. But at the process of teaching, you see you are not teaching grammar. You are teaching vocabulary. Students lead you to teach vocabulary. Let some plans uh, help you to say uh, in the same in the same way. Uh, how do I teach and how do I know students understand? The next part is to have clear learning or teaching objectives. Without the lesson plan, you may confuse your goals. The next part, to have effective instructional strategies. As we will see, students are not the same as an old belief that you go into the class, you enter a classroom and you say, okay, everybody is saying one strategy for all of them. But lesson plan um, prevents you for a uh, same uh, strategy. It helps you to organize some more and different based on each student's personality. The next part is to have engaging activities. It is very simple and clear. Uh, you open your book, you see, okay, the grammar is simple, pass, close it, I go to the class. But when you are in the class, you see students are sleeping. So lesson plan before, uh, before uh, going to the class helps you to uh, make them interesting, amazing for them. They are not sleeping anymore. And the last one is to have relevant assessment. As I said, in the process of uh, teaching, you see that you are not teaching what you uh, wanted to teach. You're teaching uh, something related to it. Something else. Something else. <coughs> the next part is the sequences of writing a lesson plan. We all know the developments, why is the lesson plan, why do we need a lesson plan, and what is a lesson plan. So we are here to write a lesson plan. How do we write it? First of all is class profile. In each lesson plan, there is a, uh, in the top of the paper, it says that uh, you have to write the level of your class, uh, how many students do you have, and the gender somehow. So it's class profile. You know your students. The next part is timetable fits. What do you think about this? Timetable fits, what do I mean? I mean the duration. For example, we have 20 minutes to start. No, that's duration. This is something else. Duration and have timing. For example, when your class is No. That's class profile. For example, you have 20 minutes for that's a plan, and you want, and you write, okay, five minutes for this thing, for, for example, for warm up, uh, 10 minutes for my main uh, thing that I wanted to, and five minutes for post event. No, that's timing. You I feel like the sequences of the teaching uh, methods or teaching subjects, yes? No. Okay, you go ahead. <laughs> Even I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once I had a class, my students said that, Madam, may you teach us the grammar at the beginning of the class? I always put my grammar at the middle of the class after revision and these things. So she tell, showed me, uh, teach it please at the beginning of the class so our mind is ready, we have energy. This is timetable fit. Means if you have discussion, you are going to teach the discussion. It's not that much important to put it at the beginning of the lesson or the beginning of the class or at the end of the class. But grammar or vocabulary, they are so important. So you have to put them at the beginning of the class. This is what I mean by timetable fit. The next part is main aims. The important aims you have, and the next part is subsidiary aims. The aims that comes near them, they are somehow less important. And the last, the next one is 
sages. Are you familiar with that? We don't have uh, this in our lesson plans. Lesson plans here. Ferrocent lesson plan, no. Uh, we used to Stages. have them uh, because it was a laborious task and lots of teachers complained. Uh, it's very difficult for us. Uh, in the first year, we decided to go through the easier one. Of course, we had the previous one that Mr. Uh, Crazy designed it. It was something like this. And it really needed lots of time to be completed. So we omit some parts or we merged, combined some parts not to be. Uh, so, yeah, probably. But in standard lesson yeah, plan, and standard lesson plan has a uh, guide to say James. What do I mean by that? It means, for example, by warm up, what is your aim? By teaching, what is your aim? By uh, post evaluation, what is your aim? I'm this sorry, is this is the most complete one, okay? If anyone understands and learns this, uh, if you're given any lesson plans anywhere, it's a piece of cake. And the next one, personal aims. Your aims are not always uh, your students' aims. I want my students to know, I want my students to do. This is not aim, uh, personal aims. Personal aims relate to yourself. For example, you have a creative new idea, you want to know if that works in your classroom or not. So it becomes your personal aims. The next one is assumption. You began to think about your uh, students, the problems they may have, or uh, do they know the lesson? Are they familiar with that or not? The next part is anticipated problems, I told you, and the possible solutions. We are not just predicting problems, we have to find solutions for them. It doesn't matter whether they happen or not. For example, so in our institutes, we have merged assumption, anticipated problems, and possible solutions into one step. Uh, generally, international format, they're separated. But here, we have merged them, combined them into one category, and the teacher should write, for example, how do you assume it will go on with the process teaching? What anticipated, uh, for example, problems do you predict, and what are your solutions? Mm -hmm. And the next part, uh, and the next part is that the parts that you mentioned, teaching aids, materials, equipment. The materials that you are going to use, you have to write it in your lesson plan. Imagine you take sub teacher, so she or he have to know that what is your material, it's what material is going to teach them. And procedure, the way that you teach, timing, that's all you said, and I guess you said, timing, grammar, 20 minutes, speaking, 10 minutes, in this way. And interaction pattern. Again, we don't have it, and I think we don't have it in our lesson plans. Interaction patterns means uh, how students will work on it, in pair, individual, or in group. This is so important too. And the last part is homework. Again, post evaluation and homework may be same, but it is important to give homework so they do it at home. It doesn't matter. They put, uh, they spend 15 minutes in class practicing, but they have to. Have the, and they have to have the uh, homework in their home. So they are going to be ready for the next session. Let's, uh, in this place, yeah. Watch it and see the summary of the
summary of what I told you in this um, 45 minutes. Next one is lesson plan templates. Let me show you, as you are not that much familiar with lesson planning, these are Terrasatopin's <coughs> lesson plans. Uh, of course, to put it simply, this is the easiest and uh, somehow the most basic form, okay? Uh, we have, in the TTC, Madam Buffer is gonna give you the original one. I told you if you can complete and fit in that one, this one is nothing compared to that. In order to save more time in plan, such lesson plans, that uh, the new teachers, for example, you have, have to give or fit in three, each term, for each class is three lesson plans. The older one, two, and the, for example, the oldest one, uh, one lesson plan for each class every term. But yes, please. So here's the first page. You write the class profile, teach evaluation, your warm up, how does the procedure develop? You have to write your objectives, main aims, and subsidiary aims. And I hope they add stage aims and personal aims too. And the next part is for uh, gear French and speed problems. And the next one is solutions that you have to. Uh, as you find to deal with them, tackling with them. And here is timing and a short summary. You write them warm up, timing, materials, and in voice range. Again, uh, I can see it, but here is extra material, warm up, timing for them, postage evaluation, means uh, the homeworks that you are going to give them, or the, the way of measuring how will they do. And the task. This is our. Uh, the next one is someone, uh, some other school's lesson plans. You have to hear, again, uh, the class profile, author, subject, units, grades level, the summary, standard and differentiated instruction, and the last one part is objective uh, and stated problems, teaching lesson, the model, the techniques that you are going to teach by now. This is a different somehow lesson plan. It is a weekly lesson plan. It shows that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they have planned some uh, plans. <coughs> this is again a uh, somehow different one. You just uh, tick them. They uh, are, they have sorry, them. We have the homework thing in international classrooms like you know, some modern countries, the most modern countries in the world, like US, England, and European countries, for each class, you have to write one lesson plan. Imagine 15 sessions, okay? Of course, they're paid in Euro, and the salary is a lot. And for instead of having four classes a day, the teachers only have one or two classes, but for each classes, they have one lesson plan. Without lesson plan, they're not gonna even talk to you, look at you. For each class, each session, one lesson plan. And imagine, but here we have only three. For each class, 15 sessions, just three lesson plans. So here we come to the part that you all gather here and I'm here to speak for you. Points to consider when writing a lesson plan. Before writing a lesson plan, you are not just uh, picking up a pen and a paper and writing, start writing, no. You have to take some consideration. Have I planned enough for the time available? For example, you have uh, 30 minutes and uh, 25 minutes you are going to teach and five minutes um, post-evaluation, homework. No, that's not standard. What are the learning outcomes? What uh, they will know? And it's divided into two parts. Behavioral and uh, the things that they do. The things they know and the things they can do. So these are the outcomes. What is my overall aim? Will the topic be motivating based on the personality that you have known from your students? Are the activities at the right level? You can't bring the, you can't uh, bring SpongeBob to FC or CA level, so it may come stupid for them. Does each step in the lesson plan help to achieve the aim, or you should cut some stages? And how should I start and end the lesson? You remember the sets I said? The ending of lesson is important too. 
how can I challenge students? You are not going to just teach, teach, teach. You have to challenge them. You have to make some difficulties for them to make them active. And how much should I review what they have already done? What problems might I have and stated problems? And how can I arouse their interest? Imagine you go to the classroom, uh, you think your lesson is so interesting, but you see that they are sleeping. So how can you arouse their interest? These are our problems. Can someone read for me, Mr. Some can't uh, concentrate for long in the course may they may not be efficient. Uh, some, some, some finish earlier than others. Time management, student remain silent, some uh, dominate the class, uh, arguments in classroom, and you have to take some in the future. So, you go to a classroom, one student is sleeping, she or he doesn't participate, one student dominates the class. From the beginning to the end, he speaks, 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 and doesn't let you teach. So, and the next part is the coursework may not be efficient. You open it, you see, oh, they cannot, uh, they cannot learn anything from the board. And another, th another problem is that some finish earlier than others. You give them practice, uh, homework or something, and some of them, they finish earlier. So they sit just like this, and you're just looking at them. This is a problem. And some can concentrate for long. We call them lazy. No, they just can't concentrate for long hours in something. And you have to say, sub teacher, you have planned a very good lesson plan, but at that day, unfortunately, you hear that you have to leave the class or you get uh, illness, so you have to take the sub teacher. How should you write your lesson plan that a sub teacher can teach it as well? And here's a solution, but before going to solutions, do you have any solutions for that? For example, students uh, remain in silent, she doesn't participate in class, what do you do? You just say, okay, sit there and let me finish my lesson, what do you do? If a student just sits, doesn't say anything, just looks at you or the student just talks. He doesn't close his mouth. Uh, ask him to explain the advantage or summary of the Others? This happens a lot in your classroom, so you should have a solution for that. Not all students are the same. They are not always hugging in the uh, middle. So here are solutions. Solution. Here those who can do individual. Person who cannot concentrate, you have to put them in a group that some other will help them to concentrate. Sorry, these solutions are one chapter of the book you're going to study for the TTC. Listen carefully. Have creativity in asking questions. You have a very good lesson plan, but you go into the classroom, you ask a very simple, stupid question. Students look at you like this, and so they remain silent. You have to ask challenging, creative questions to make them active, to make them use their mind, start it, and think. The next part is huh. have drawing for speaking time. Some dominates the class, some remain silent. So you have something like drawing, they vote. And uh, in this way, you pick up, for example, Marcy, your turn to talk. This is not a very good uh, solution because maybe Marcy is that is the student that always talks, but it helps. The next uh, solution is use supplementary materials. If the coursework is not uh, good enough, so you have to use supplementary materials such as poems, storybooks, videos, pictures, flashcards. Make safe and calm environment and don't get out of control. If they have arguments with each other, if they are not paying attention to you, you shouldn't get out of control. You should stay calm, safe, and make the environment as well. So they do uh, become good. Differentiate strategies. 
not all the students are the same. You have to plan uh, different strategies for each one of them. Uh, have extra supportive activities if you finish your lesson earlier, so you have 20 minutes extra. You have to do some. And here those, I, I put them and have clear and simple explanation. This is for taking sub teachers. And I said, and I told you, even write the number of page you are going to teach. For example, page 15, uh, the title, and this is. So a person who reads your lesson plan can understand easily. persuaded me. I said, why isn't, it, why isn't it just saying, for example, rectangular four or a square four or a circle, all, all uh, together. He said, uh, the variety of the shapes make it more interesting and uh, it's not going to be something boring or tedious, at least for the eyes. And he somehow persuaded me, why not let's break the rules once, no problem. But, you know, once one part circle, one part triangle, yeah, it makes it not only funnier, but also uh, icon, more iconoclastic, I'm going to say. Yeah. Repetitive questions, again the same problem, some teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 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 Some teacher again complains me about repetitive questions exactly in voice branch uh, lesson plan. Three times you ask them post evaluation, post evaluation homework, and this makes them tired. Uh, this is again a problem on our lesson plan. Possible solutions, some of them they just uh, predict the problems, they don't have any solution for them. So, what is the usage of that? Next part is homework, they don't include that. Our Got it? And timetable fit. The thing that I told you. Grammar at the beginning, uh, discussion at the end of the class. In order to break more rules, I'm, next year I'm going to print them in color. <laughs> Colorful lesson plans. Seriously. <laughs> Kids pink. <laughs> <laughs> Higher levels, of course, different colors. Yeah. Maybe. very important. Uh, we don't need the teachers just copy-paste the things they've studied in the TTC or TKT. 
we need extra, lots of extra things and innovation. We need your uh, ingenuity and your genius inside the lesson plan, not just going through the class, uh, I mean, tediously and monotonously, but the things there in the book. Okay, there in the book, we know it. Maybe the first and second term, we don't tell you anything, but after the third term, even after the second term, we expect lots of innovation and technological usage of the things, you know, the websites that uh, the participants are telling you, and consultation with us. Ask us, and Mr. Ahmadi, Mr. Pagishad, and other staff, uh, where can I find these? Which book shall I have the reference? We need the best lesson plans possible. Uh, not only for three sessions. I mean, we, we, uh, we're just going to observe you three sessions. I mean, the whole term you should have planned. As I told you, don't write so detailed, so you have to write the general overview of aims and your lesson plan. Use abbreviations. They are uh, they have written in your they have written in your papers. You can use them in your lesson planning. They really help because, for example, you are going to write something. It has five words. Instead of that, you use abbreviations. And use other lesson plans to get new ideas. Your mind is blocked. You don't know what to do in your class. So there are some websites I'm going to introduce to you to get new ideas and opinions. Useful abbreviations. <laughs> Here are all, and uh, not all of them, the most I found. And they are really helpful. I have wrote some uh, lesson plans with them in application. PPP means presentation, production, you practice. Yes, you can read from that. Yeah, I told you some of them. For example, TTQ means teacher talking quality. SCT, students talking time. TTT, teacher talking time. Uh, RP, yeah. RP, receive pronunciation, uh, ESL, English as a second language, CALL means computer assistance, language learning, and you can uh, see them. For one minute, you can read them. They're very useful. If you use them in your lesson plans, it uh, helps you to facilitate the progress. And it, it shows how knowledgeable you are by the first uh, just uh, with the abbreviations, not writing the whole thing. And here are some useful websites for getting new ideas. Remember I told you sometimes your mind is completely flat, you don't have any idea how can I teach you past or how can I run a discussion with the topic of 
environments. So these are some websites you can uh, get some ideas. Teacher vision. And they are 
all the articles for uh, vocabulary. Sir, next part. The next part is lesson plan page. As it's obvious, it has a lot of lesson plans at the top. It has lesson plans, topics, worksheets. It has some uh, subject to arts, music, history, science. You can choose them and get the idea. Uh, 
institute, as I told you, there's those were some websites that you can get your ideas, but we can have our own websites too. As we know, the teachers, for example, uh, supervisors, of course, they write more um, effective lesson plans than us. So if they upload it in that website, we can uh, get some ideas from them. <laughs> from summertime. We didn't have the website, we didn't have the admin, but some of for sure. Yeah, because every mind matters. These are my questions. How to write a lesson plan fast in advance, what are anticipated problems, and how to deal with unexpected events, aims, <laughs> To explain actual definition of lesson planning, to clarify the sequences, to suggest some profitable tips. I hope you enjoyed this. Any questions? Uh,